During my time as a content creator on YouTube, I've come to understand that the online world offers both great opportunities for connection and creativity, as well as a platform for negativity and hostility. This contrast is a fundamental aspect of the online ecosystem, showcasing the massive range of human behavior and interactions. As a YouTuber, I'm no stranger to encountering various forms of online hate, but nothing could have prepared me for the issue of cyberstalking. One person who particularly stands out in this regard is Jared Chasen, otherwise known as Jared333, whose initial actions seem more eccentric than threatening. Our paths crossed in unusual circumstances when he at one point began claiming to manage Daniel Larson. However, as time passed, his behavior took a strange turn, revealing a different side to Jared. My first interaction with Jared Chasen occurred seven months ago when he released a video criticizing my documentaries on Daniel Larson. In his video, Jared accused me of exploiting Daniel's content for personal gain. Yo, Kus Kusari is a bum and makes a living. Shut up! Now, it's no secret that YouTube is my primary source of income, as it's the main thing supporting me while I continue to pursue my studies as a full-time college student. So how is this a valid point of criticism? I don't really know. In response to his accusations, I jokingly commented on my YouTube community page, suggesting that Jared's critique could potentially end my career, and hinted at retirement. Of course, little did I know that this seemingly harmless exchange would set the stage for what was to come. Activity with Jared concerning my page was sporadic and inconsistent until around late February to early March of this year when Jared's focus shifted back to me, this time with a slightly more aggressive approach. During this time, Jared's behavior escalated from occasional comments to a sustained campaign of harassment. Under the guise of advocacy, he began making baseless allegations and absurd threats against me, even going as far as accusing me of being an illegal immigrant despite having no evidence to support such claims. So I think that Kusari might be an illegal immigrant. His tactics then progressed to threats of deportation, which given my citizenship status as a US-born individual, only highlighted the escalation in his harassment. Not content with just baseless threats, Jared went on to create videos featuring himself and his pet rabbit, Mr. Buttons, where he boasted about connections to prominent figures like Donald Trump and Alex Jones. These claims, although unsubstantiated, reflected the bizarre and surreal nature of the attention I was receiving from him. The uh, Kusari Bunny. Um, his name is Mr. Buns, but his nickname is Kusari Bunny. After Kusari, bruh, he's a baby. I raised him from a fingerling. Here's the deal, Kusari. Me and Mr. Buns, aka Kusari, want all the Daniel Arison videos off the internet. Okay, I ha I am friends with Alex Jones, who knows who is, knows Donald Trump and has his phone number and will get you deported if they have to. Like Jones, I'm at the Austin, Texas airport, bro. Hey, that, that video I saw you with uh, Mark, uh, uh, Mark, uh, they got a great Kusari might be friends with Don, uh, Faze Rug, but I'm friends with Don Lad, who has a lot more money than Faze Rug. Sorry, not sorry, Kusari. In the midst of all of this, Jared released a diss track aimed at me, which was poorly executed and failed to gain much traction, much like his other videos in comparison to his subscriber count. Yo, why is you sorry talking all that mad shit about your boy, Jared333? And Daniel Larson, he's at the trap house right now cooking up. Whipping up so like yo man, what's up with sorry man? You don't know what hits me. It's like a ton of bricks, man. I might come and get you. You never know. You see in black clouds and we might even go. It's a new day, a new show that might even blow. Listen, you gotta get Daniel Larson off your channel, man. He's messing up your reputation. You ain't even planted, but a man and another man can elope. We can hunt an animals and antelope. Another reason, another man. 
cantaloupe. Yeah, that's what Eminem said back in the 90s. You know what we're talking about when you know what's up cracking. Like, like a Despite the lackluster response, he proceeded to release a second, ultimate diss track against me, this time targeting both myself and Daniel Larson. However, this second attempt didn't fare any better despite its grandiose title. These incidents paint a very vivid picture of Jared, showcasing him as someone who not only craves attention, but is deeply immersed in a delusional quest for relevance, in many ways similar to Daniel Larson. He resorts to making strange accusations and issuing threats against others to undermine them while promoting his own deranged content. This insane progression from baseless legal threats to creating diss tracks is just so astonishing because it brilliantly shows the lengths that Jared is willing to go to harass people in attempts to gain popularity. However, as I delve deeper into the background of this individual who showcased such an unhealthy interest in my content, I discovered that terms like clout chasing and harassment only scratch the surface when it comes to describing him. What emerged was not just the profile of someone seeking attention, but rather someone whose actions both on and off the web have raised serious concerns. Allegations of animal abuse, neglect, perversion, and a mysterious and tragic story surrounding the passing of his wife shed a completely different light on Jared, far removed from the initial absurdity and humor of our interactions. This is no longer solely about a funny little internet dispute from one side, but rather about the real-life consequences of someone else's behavior. Therefore, today's video is not just a recounting of a personal ordeal, but an exploration into the life and actions of Jared. It aims to piece together a history that may not have been extensively documented like others, but is equally if not more disturbing than some of the most appalling things I have covered on this channel. This is the story of Jared Chasen. Jared Lance Chasen is a 36-year-old self-proclaimed influencer from Brownsville, Texas, who lives with his family. Jared has an extensive history on the internet, having uploaded around 31,000 videos to his channel since 2014. His content, which is peculiar, eccentric, and sometimes deranged, covers various topics, from cooking and mukbangs to music and daily life vlogs. Despite the seemingly harmless nature of his videos, a closer look reveals much more concerning aspects. Firstly, Jared's upload frequency is astonishing, indicating that social media is not just a hobby or a dream career for him, but essentially his entire life. Scrolling through his videos tab, you might only cover a few days worth of content before the page refreshes to load more. Secondly, Jared's eating habits are alarmingly unhealthy, with fast food, candy, soda, and alcohol featuring prominently in his videos. Although he occasionally prepares a salad for a vlog, it's clear that his lifestyle is not healthy. Now keep in mind this observation is not a critique or insult on his weight, but rather a concern about his frequent indulgence in unhealthy eating habits and other alarming behaviors concerning food which will unfortunately be covered later on. Nice. If you eat the fast food, you get healthy bones, you get healthy body. If you eat the fast food 24-7, you can be healthy today. Make sure you eat the fast food all the time. The fast food 24-7 keeps you healthy. It has the nutrients that you need every day. You have to eat the fast food places right now. <laughs> Make sure to like, subscribe, and share. Check out the links in the description. Right now, go eat something fast food. Thank you. A hallmark of Jared's content is his focus on internet celebrities and lolcows. He has a propensity for attaching himself to these figures, seizing nearly every opportunity he can to capitalize on trending names to draw attention to his channel. This behavior is not limited to simple clout chasing, as Jared has repeatedly used the notoriety of well-known internet personalities not just for views, but to scam his audience as well. You see, approximately a year ago, Jared announced he was becoming Daniel Larson's new manager, which raised a lot of eyebrows within the Larson community. Just days before I released my first Daniel Larson documentary on March 3rd, Jared uploaded a video titled Daniel Larson Manager here with important update information. 
In the video, he discussed Daniel's situation in Las Vegas at the time and mentioned raising money for him. However, early into this brief video, Jared plugs his own cash app and includes a link to it in the description, which very clearly underlines his real intentions with what he's trying to do here. Uh, Daniel Larson's main manager here, GM, general manager of Daniel Larson. Um, basically, right now Daniel's homeless, so we're trying to help him out. Um, cash app, J A R R E D C H A I S S O N, capital J, capital C. Uh, we're gonna send Daniel Larson some money, try to get him a hotel room, get him some food, paper goods, toilet paper, paper towels, towels. Um, right now, Daniel Larson, we're not gonna allow him to have any pets because he cannot take care of any pets. So he wants a little dog or cat, but he can't. He can't have handle that right now. Daniel Larson needs to work on himself. Uh, he's working on a new song right now. It's called Justified, Daniel Larson. Before focusing on Daniel Larson, Jared exploited the stories of other homeless individuals, claiming to have established a company to house them and solicit donations through his cash app. A video he made making such false claims showcases his pattern of deceit. The bad Jared 333. So me and T were talking the other day, and so I created a cash app, right? And basically we're gonna use this cash app to fund some homeless people. Not just fund them, but house them. Housing as in not living on the streets anymore. Or in some people's backyards, literally around or around their house. We're calling our thing a charity warm bright homes for homeless sounds pretty catchy right so we would need definite funding for this because there are some big things that will be involved such as land and obviously the housing part so the difference between our location and other locations that house homeless is that ours they can live or stay there permanently now that's only with good behavior granted for example not damaging property not dealing drug prostitution things like that so but with good behavior they can indefinitely stay there at warm bright homes the problem with a lot of homeless people is they're usually doing something unlike for instance drugs so if we look and so we're gonna look for the good homeless people you know and those people that that are willing to do what is right can stay there at the warm bright homes for homeless obviously they don't ever get kicked out so with your help we can make a difference in a few homeless people's lives the cash app link will be in the description and in the title of this video Naturally, this promised company, Warm Bright Homes for Homeless, never came to fruition. But of course, by Jared's logic, I'm the one who's exploiting homeless people here. It couldn't, it couldn't possibly be him. Jared has also falsely claimed connections with Charlie Zelenoff, also known as the TikTok Karate Kid, who is a content creator who produces trolling content around MMA and boxing. Despite Zelenoff's lackluster fighting skills, he gained a new wave of popularity on TikTok in the late 2010s and early 2020s. Jared's frequent use of Zelenoff's name in his video titles frustrated many who were seeking genuine content about Charlie, tarnishing Jared's reputation in that community. More recently, Jared has latched onto Tyree Sneed, a lesser known figure notorious for his outlandish behavior online, which includes but is not limited to dressing up as Batman and making public threats against people. Despite warnings from various communities to steer clear of Sneed, Jared seemed eager to collaborate with him on a rap cover. But for those of you who are looking for a more comprehensive understanding of Tyree Sneed, Mr. Snowflake has produced a detailed video on him which is available in the video's description. Another key figure in the story of Jared is Red Screen, a YouTuber who has been actively documenting and trying to expose Jared's actions for years, becoming a frequent target of Jared's harassment over time. Shortly after Jared began targeting me on his channel, I discovered Red Screen's content. His channel features dozens of videos about individuals like Charlie Zelenoff and Tyree Sneed, but most prominently features Jared. I was so unbelievably shocked and appalled to find out that the same man trying to attach himself to my channel and content through spamming and intimidation was depicted in these videos' titles as a total degenerate and pervert. Diving into the videos, I sought to understand what was truly wrong with him. The depth of the rabbit hole was 
unforeseeable. Thanks to Red Screen and other channels covering Jared, it became clear that Jared Chasen has an idealized version of himself. A superstar, an idol, an icon, an influencer. However, this vision is far removed from reality. So without further ado, let's explore the allegations and incidents that comprise Jared Chasen's extensive history. One thing that became blatantly apparent about Jared was his inappropriate behavior towards women and young girls, which disturbingly included his own niece. This specific situation, while the details are still somewhat shaky due to later statements made by involved parties, still crossed ethical and moral boundaries. This egregious behavior came to light during a live stream hosted by, ironically enough, Jared's good old pal Tyree Sneed. During the stream, Sophia, Jared's niece, shockingly claims that he had shown her and her friends his OnlyFans account when she was merely 13, allegedly sharing it through Instagram. This wasn't just an unsubstantiated allegation without any concrete evidence. Sophia verified her claim by showing proof during the live stream, showing Tyree on call what appeared to be one of Jared's, well, adult videos. Despite the video being censored for this documentary, it includes a clip of a nude Jared that he had uploaded on an adult website, more specifically what appears to be The Hub. While I could only find fragments of Tyree's livestream, it appeared that he, in the clips, seemed defensive of Jared upon reacting to the video. Even though Sophia provided evidence that she was aware of Jared's OnlyFans accounts during the livestream clip, she would later state that the assertion Jared had shown her the content was entirely a hoax aimed at boosting Jared's viewership. An in-depth interview with Red Screen later revealed Sophia's changed stance on the matter. He's always like trying to get some of the, the views. It's all about views. I hope you understand that. That's, that's all they give a shit about. I don't really care about like any of that shit. Okay, I don't know how many times I've said it, but like I said, it's bullshit. You're gullible as hell, and very soon the media is going to start lying to you, the news is going to start lying to you, and you're going to believe that shit too, because you're gullible. That's exactly what people like you are. You gotta wake up, bro. Okay, I don't know how many fucking times I've said it. You're slow as shit. My uncle only gives a shit about views, and that's why he set that shit up. He, he had me and my friend join so that we could get views, shit like this, because people hating like you, dumbass people like you, give him views, give him money, and you're not seeing that because you can't fucking think for yourself. Can't see shit is the crazy part. The only reason you're mad is because I can see things for how they actually are. You can't see things for how they actually are, and that's why you're projecting your weird-ass Alabama fantasies onto my family. Because like I said, I don't know how many goddamn times I've said it, my uncle's not a pedophile. And the only reason people said that shit is for views. You can believe what you want. Your beliefs are your truth. Your beliefs are your reality, and I offer nothing to you but peace, my brother. You know that Jared's homeless. Jared is not homeless, and he has proven that. Yeah, but it shows that he tells two 13-year-old girls to subscribe to his OnlyFans account. I didn't respond. I, there's no messages back from me in this group chat. That's why I'm not posting them. Um, but like I said, they threw me in a group chat where they just try to coerce me more into thinking that this was all for views, um, except when one of the friends that she put in the group chat let out that she also thinks Jared is a pedophile. Um, pretty weird, huh? Pretty weird, huh? Um, another thing is the, the other person that she put in this group chat, it was her. It was her. Let me, let me show you, let me show you uh, a voice message uh, that she barely tried changing her voice for. Can you like shut the fuck up already? Like Jared is not a fucking pedophile, so you get just like fucking curious already and shoot your fucking brains out because i would fucking love to see your organs flying all over the place already ultimately my feelings on this um it definitely makes me sad the situation surrounding this specific allegation remains unclear yet it undeniably brings up several concerns 
If Jared never directly exposed Sophia to his adult content, how did she become aware of it? Considering Sophia was 13 at the time of the 2021 recording, which indicates that she is still a minor to this day, this situation, hoax or not, involves adult content still being linked to a minor in a context associated with Jared, which casts a massive shadow of suspicion over this entire situation. On Jared's porn hosting accounts, he unabashedly posts videos of himself engaging in lewd acts, including masturbating and exposing himself in public spaces such as restrooms. Daniel Cohen and, and Bad Baby want to grab my dick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> his inclination for perverse acts has seemingly infiltrated his work life as well. With evidence circulating online of him engaging in inappropriate behavior with food items in the restroom of a McDonald's where he was employed. Although I will refrain from showing the explicit segment of the video, I'm about to play a cropped and edited version of Jared in the McDonald's restroom, quote unquote, playing with a hamburger. For the sake of decency, like I said, the more explicit parts have been cut, but this short clip just highlights the repulsiveness of his actions. Uh, I love McDonald's. I love McDonald's. See? I love McDonald's. I love McDonald's. Uh, fuck me. Fuck me, Jared. Uh, put your put your cock in my mouth. Okay. Okay. Unfortunately, Jared's inappropriate behavior towards minors continues. In one live stream, when a viewer asks if he should pursue a relationship with a 13-year-old girl, Jared casually condones pedophilia, saying, Feel that before you should I ask you about this? I'm not older, I'm only 25, okay. If you want to, I mean, a lot of people don't like that kind of shit, but if you want to, whatever folks are both. He then quickly moves on, unbothered, to the next question, which unsurprisingly concerned his ejaculation distance. In another clip, Jared sexualizes underage girls walking by, pointing at one and calling her super cute and his type, body-wise. His female companion, who was walking with him and is also someone who we will talk about later, barely reacts to these alarming comments. Jared's casual endorsement of pedophilia and objectification of children is deeply troubling. Earlier, we discussed Jared's attempts to pose as Daniel's manager to solicit donations. But Jared is actually more notorious in the Daniel Larson community for posting a disturbing video of himself masturbating on the r slash Daniel Larson subreddit last year. In the brief clip which traumatized innocent Reddit users that day, Jared falsely claimed, Daniel Larson tried to touch my dick in public before turning the camera to his groin and fondling himself. Daniel Larson tried to grab my dick in the public. Since then, Jared has been banned from r slash Daniel Larson, but continued lurking and spamming in the secondary subreddit so aggressively that according to the manager Slim Jim Morrison, he got the whole subreddit permanently banned for policy violations. To this day, r slash Daniel Larson fans remains banned, likely due to Jared's actions. Of course, in order to get a better understanding of Jared, you have to get a better understanding of his family. Ryan Chason is another figure in Jared's story, though not as well known, yet equally problematic in his own distinct way. Ryan, who also just so happens to be Jared's brother, features regularly in his videos and collaborations. Like Jared, Ryan has a considerable history, particularly with legal issues and arrests. 
In a video from 2021, Ryan is seen driving with a pink suctionable sex toy attached to his car's windshield, making inappropriate comments about his time in the penitentiary, claiming that obtaining male booty was a <laughs> what? that obtaining male booty was more crucial than drinking water. Back in the early 2000s in the penitentiary, getting booty was more important than drinking water, man. Seriously, getting booty, a man's butt, was more important than drinking water. To the shock of probably no one, Jared was accompanying him in the passenger seat during the recording of this video, participating in the conversation. Ryan's arrest records from Brownsville reveal multiple charges against him, including theft, which is a state jail felony, assault, which is a Class A misdemeanor, criminal trespass, which is a Class B misdemeanor, and resisting arrest, which is a Class A misdemeanor. In January of 2024, Ryan was arrested for a traffic citation, a Class C misdemeanor, and shortly thereafter, in February, for possession of a controlled substance. Ryan has also been involved in harassing his cousin's wife for months on end, both online and offline, despite her persistent requests for him to stop. This harassment extended to creating fake social media accounts in her name, posting her address, and spreading harmful rumors about her. It is what it is, man. You know what I'm saying? Leave my brother, leave my brother alone. You know what I'm saying? Stop causing problems for the family. You know what I'm saying? Um, his history of targeting vulnerable individuals is further compounded by Jared's failure to address Ryan's abusive past towards family members. Jared himself has hinted at Ryan's history of stealing various medals, as well as his involvement in assaults. This is the update on my brother Ryan. Uh, she, was, she was driving him around to steal metal. Also, he was wanted for the assault on Deidre. Also, he was wanted for the assault on Deidre and in another video advised Ryan to stay away from their mother, possibly due to past violent behavior towards his sister. Uh, this message is for Ryan. If you need to try and get away from mom at this time and point in time and try and stop doing drugs because that is the number one thing that's gonna help you become more of yourself when you stop doing drugs. It, it was really hard for me to stop, but I did it and uh, I'm, you know, it's a, lot, it's a lot better for me now. I mean, I can keep a job. Now and uh, you know, you know, you know, just try and stay away from the drugs, man. Because when you're doing drugs, you get you're gonna get possessed by the spirit of that drug, whatever kind of drug it is. So the cousin's wife shared her side of the story on Facebook, detailing her experiences with Ryan, including an encounter where he harassed and charged at her. Jared's sister also commented on the impact of Ryan's behavior on their mother, noting the stress-induced migraines and sleep disturbances that she suffered as a result. It's catching on the little grass, bro. Oh, man. You do? That's not enough, is it? <laughs> That's not a good idea. <laughs> you gonna go inside for real? Dude, it's really, it's seriously catching, like, fur. Ryan? Ryan, come here, bro. I'm not tripping, bro. Come here. It's gonna hit the, it's gonna hit the fence. Ryan, come here. Look, dude. It's going to the fence. Man, you're tripping balls, dude. I'm serious, it keeps bet, going that way. It, bet it never touches the fence. How much you wanna bet? I'm not betting. Well, maybe it's dying out, like you say. But look, it wants to go that way, bro. Gonna, bro, that's, inhaling that is bad on There's top of no that. Fuel for <laughs> this is bad. <laughs> I didn't do that. <laughs> For nearly a year, Red Screen would dedicate his efforts to unraveling the concerning situation surrounding Jared's two dogs, Coolio and Sonic, revealing a disturbing pattern of abuse and neglect. Jared controversially chose to feed his dogs human food, some of which is known to be harmful or even toxic to dogs, such as raw potatoes, cheeseburgers containing onions, and excessively hot pasta. This decision sparked criticism from viewers, one of whom, Miami Redskin, expressed dismay on YouTube, urging Jared to provide proper dog food that meets a dog's nutritional needs instead of unhealthy human food. Attempting to rationalize his choices, Jared argued that natural foods, similar to those dogs might consume in the wild, are preferable to commercial dog foods, which he criticized as overpriced and laden with artificial ingredients. Okay, so you guys have heard, um videos like commercials uh, and stuff like that where they say, oh, this dog, uh, formulated dog food has 
real chicken made with real chicken and beef. And same thing with uh, other animals like cats. Made with real chicken and turkey. So, and then some people will see us feeding her like when we had the Sonic. And, and other people, stupid people I've seen in Brownsville and a small little crappy part of Texas. Um, saying like, um, yeah, don't give your dog, because I was feeding him like human food. And so they're like, oh yeah, don't give your dog the human food. I'm like, okay. I'm feeding him real chicken, this formulated dog food with made with real chicken what's the difference of me giving him the real chicken and then the dog food <laughs> look they fly out like popcorn dude i think they're too hot dude it looks hot? like they're too hot for him <laughs> it's too hot for him or maybe it's too much salt i don't no, know it's, i think it's too hot i put the tiniest bit of pepper it can't be that yeah <laughs> Move. 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 Move, or we're not getting any. <laughs> Let me see. Look how fast he drinks this. Okay, yeah, this last one. Yeah. Look, he ate it though. Yeah, he ate it. Yeah. He ate it though. I can't believe that. He ate a raw potato. You don't have any hot sauce in there? I give me my food. <laughs> In a particularly distressing instance, Jared is shown preparing a meal for himself while opting to feed his dog an expired, moldy beef patty from an old McDonald's bag, dismissively telling his dog, that's all you get, is this old ass meat. His wife's reaction to this was minimal, merely expressing disgust without intervening. This is all you get, this old ass meat. <laughs> Look how nasty. Ew. This is all you get. <laughs> Oh. And you have to wait to even get that. Oh, nasty. That's all you get today. <laughs> I'm even going to put this back for later. This old ass chicken. The situation worsened when Jared, while eating his meal, chewed up a bite and then spat it into the dog's bowl for it to eat, a clear example of neglect and improper care, with his wife again offering no substantial reaction to this behavior. Oh yeah, that's a critical topic I haven't yet addressed in this video. And yes, you understood those last sentences correctly. Jared does have a wife. Tia Robinson. You might recognize her from some of the clips I've shown of Jared throughout this video. She was the one with Jared at the mall when he was recording young girls without their consent, referring to them as his type. Moreover, she has been present in almost every instance of Jared's neglect towards his dog showcased so far. Evidently, Tia is not just a bystander, but has participated in this abuse herself. Despite Jared actively harming his pets by feeding them foods they are not supposed to be eating, and even spitting in their food bowls, Tia essentially dismissed these actions. A resurfaced clip even showed Tia verbally abusing one of the dogs, Coolio. Viewer discretion is advised before I show this clip. It is pretty hard to watch. Yeah, look at you, look at you, looking away. I wish I could get clearer footage of you right now. I really do, I really do. You know what, every cancer cell in my body hates you. 
Every single one! Returning to Jared, his method of feeding the dogs led to Coolio developing health issues like persistent diarrhea, which would have warranted a vet visit. Hey, what's up guys? YouTube Jared. Um, today I'm going to take Coolio to the vet and see what uh, if I can get anything for him like antibiotics or something that maybe help him out. He's got diarrhea. Well, his diarrhea is getting more firm, but he's still very sick. See, look. He's not eating anything. Like we give him like all kind of food. I mean, he won't eat it on any. Red Screen's investigation into the feeding practices raised questions about potential physical abuse. And in one clip, Jared is seen bathing Coolio, warning the dog to stay still with a threatening, Hey, still, don't make me hit you. Hey, still make me hit you. Upon hearing this, Red Screen consulted various family members about Jared's history with animals. One family member shared a news report of an animal abuse incident caught on camera in 2019 where a man was seen brutally assaulting a dog. A bystander recorded this violence, and the man fled with the dog after being confronted. Only on two, police are looking for a man who was caught on camera punching and kicking a dog. Good evening, thank you for joining us. I'm Bill Biasa. Hello, I'm Dominique Soxa. A man recorded this disturbing video on his phone. He says it happened at an apartment complex in Clute, Brazoria County, which is near Lake Jackson. Channel 2 Sophia Beausoleil just spoke with the man who shot that video and is live right outside the complex where this happened. And Sophia, before we start, we do need to warn our viewers that the viewer they're about to see is difficult to watch. Yes, it is. And the man who captured the incident on camera says he wants justice for the dog. Christian Yada adopted his best friend, Moose, from a shelter earlier this year. He loves dogs, so Christian was appalled by what he saw in his rearview mirror Monday morning while sitting in his car. And I see the guy behind me uh, beating his dog and kicking it. Christian says he started recording on his phone seconds after he saw what took place in the grass at the Costa Verde Apartments. The first thing I seen in the, the rearview mirror was him picking up the dog over his shoulders and body slamming it onto the ground and stomping on it. The camera cuts off as the 19-year-old gets out of the car to confront the man in the video. I asked the guy, what are you doing? And he replied with nothing. He just looked at me, looked at me picked up the dog and ran off. Christian posted the video on social media and people throughout Brazoria County shared it. Clue police also caught wind of it and reached out to Christian, who then filed a police report. I uh, hope that he gets what he deserves, um, uh, prison. Comments on the news segment video suggest the man might be Jared, with Jared himself commenting ambiguously on the video, feigning ignorance about the assailant's identity, raising even more suspicions about his guilt in the process. I want to clarify that while many in the Brownsville community and Jared's family believe that he is the man in this video, this remains an allegation. The belief stems from similarities in the location, physical appearance between the suspected abuser and Jared, and even the dog resembling one of Jared's pets, Sonic. Although I cannot confirm Jared's involvement with absolute certainty, the evidence in Jared's history of neglect make the allegations highly credible in my opinion. It's essential to differentiate between opinion and fact, but given the circumstances and Jared's response to the incident, it's difficult not to believe that he's capable of such cruelty. Another incident involving Jared and his dog Sonic reveals a troubling example of Jared's animal abuse taking place in Las Vegas. Jared and his family claimed that they had only left Sonic in the car for three minutes while Jared was supposedly obtaining a health card for a job. Contrary to their statement, Jared was discovered walking around Vegas live streaming, leaving Sonic alone in the car. Thankfully, a YouTube user identified Jared's car, finding Sonic in a distressed state, overheated, and surrounded by his own feces. One user, Strope Deville, highlighted that while Jared was taking videos, his dog suffered for days in a hot car without food or water, leading to dehydration and unsanitary conditions. Another user, Bacon Mafia, pointed out geographical inconsistencies in Jared's story, questioning why there hadn't been charges for animal neglect. Further discussions revealed that the library's security had noticed Jared's car parked for an extended period with Sonic inside. 
Police and Animal Control were eventually alerted, rescuing Sonic and discovering Jared's YouTube information on the dog's tag. Jared's response, of course, was to deny all responsibility, focusing on the challenges of recovering Sonic and avoiding acknowledging his role in the dog's distress. We, by, then, by the time I saw somebody on there had posted that they had found him in the car, he was overheating and he had pooped in the car and stuff. We wanted to go and find him, but first of all, we didn't have, you know, where to, where to go to find him. And by time, at that time, it happened so fast. Like, if you look at back, back at the comment, uh, I didn't post in the comment because, like I said, I don't curse on my on my channel on the comments. So by this time, of course, not, they're not gonna give back to us because I, you know, I made his tag and everything with the phone numbers on there and my channel, my YouTube channel too, even. So, long story short, you know, Sonic's gone, basically. Jared's actions had broader implications, including legal concerns and the eventual repossession of his car. He actually attempted to disguise his car's license plate to avoid detection, a move that drew police attention during an encounter captured by Jared, where the officer criticized him for concealing the plate and noted a call about a dispute involving Jared and Tia. I'm not gonna argue, I'm not gonna debate. Somebody called the police department and told us, you guys were arguing with him. I don't know, I wasn't here, not a big deal. Covering your license plate is a big deal. Yeah, she did that. I mean, I can take it off. Yes. Hi, ma'am. How are you? You okay? Are you guys okay? In a fortunate turn of events, Sonic was adopted from an animal shelter by a new family, offering him a chance at a happier and healthier life away from the circumstances he endured with Jared and his family. When Red Screen pressed on with his investigation into Jared's treatment of his dogs, efforts to uncover information hit a wall, reportedly due to intervention by Jared's sister who allegedly cautioned the rest of the family against disclosing details to him. This blocking seemed insurmountable until revelations surfaced through videos showcasing Jared cheating on his wife with sex workers, which outraged a family member enough to break the silence imposed by Jared's sister and share what they claimed happened to the dog, Coolio. In a distressing turn, a video emerged of Jared contemplating selling Coolio. The dog, barely visible under a blanket on the couch, with restricted breathing space, became a symbol of Jared's misery. Jared explained his dilemma, stating his reluctance to lose Coolio alongside his housing predicament, suggesting he'd sell the dog to the highest bidder to prevent abandonment or even euthanasia. This justification, however, was marred by a stark disregard for Coolio's well-being, as Jared reflected on the dog's value compared to personal possessions and his living situation with Tia, whom he described as crazy. Am I recording? It, it, where's my dog? Look, if for any reason you guys do not help me out, and I end up not getting enough work and stuff because you guys don't want to help me out, and I end up losing my dog, okay? And I don't want to lose him. Look, I'm going to have no choice but to sell him to somebody because I, I don't... Okay, look, there, everything is off contingencies, right? So if I lose my my work, you know, I lose my house, my small shitty apartment, and then I lose my dog. I don't want, out of all of this, I'd rather not lose this, my dog. So this laptop, you know, $750 laptop. So it may, it may sound weird if I say I'm going to sell him to somebody. I will sell him to the highest bidder if I lose my apartment. The reason why he goes to the highest bidder is someone that wants to pay the most for him will be the well, he will be the worth the most to that person. So let's say someone giving me like 20 bucks for him. He's gonna, that person's gonna view him as 20 bucks. He's not worth 20 bucks, he's worth a lot more than 20 bucks. Like I said, this is $750 laptop. I, th he's worth more than $750 to me. So I'm not selling him for 750. It's gonna be at least $1,000, like I said, the highest bidder, if I lose my apartment. I'm not putting him in the pound because if no one picks him up from the pound, they euthanize him. When they say euthanize, they kill him. It's not happening to this dog. I don't know where. I already researched before uh, my other dog, Sonic, and someone fortunately bought him out. So help me help Coolio, because this is my dog. Come on, show yourself for the video, man. Be a sport.
I have said fucker. I, it all came from down there. Like, I don't like y'all. Y'all state's weird. And I'm tired of being married to it. Like, the only problem is, is I don't think it'll go away even if I, like, get you off. Like, I don't think it'll go away. I think, like, the idiots from down there that are stuck on me, they'll just, like, try to do something else to set to be on me. But yeah, I don't know. It's something about when you mention your sister and then Terry, I was like, I don't like you. That's mean, right? But I mean, I am honest. Like, you've been mean to me before. You called me, like, the N-word, and I got over it. Just maybe just stay away for a longer time. Like, maybe just stay down there for, like, two or three years or something. I'm tired of pretending that you're not fake, too. Like, it's always some weird fed fucker Texas show. Like, I don't like him. I don't like you. I don't like your sister. I only like your mom. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Like, I've been pretending that I don't know what's going on just because I can't do anything about it, but I'm so fucking tired of, like fucking virtual ass fucking pussies like infiltrating and using you to do it especially since i don't even like you anymore and it's not even you most of the time like i don't like texas i don't like fed fucker i don't like your sister i don't like you i don't like fake you <laughs> i'm just ready for y'all to fuck off basically except for i don't know how to get them get you guys off and with people this determined it really seems like whether we're together or not they're gonna just find some other deceptive like some people are doing it to protect me understand but it's like, you're not. Like, you're just being a fed fucker tool, you and your sister. I don't like anyone in your family anymore except for your mom. I'm glad that you mentioned your sister because I was really trying to hold my tongue about this because I'm loyal as fuck. But I don't like your sister anymore. Like, I feel 100% sure that her obsession with her freaky ass boyfriend is what's caused me so much problems because he always thinks I'm trying to mess with him. Like the other day, he was even doing something weird to me, you know, and I don't say anything because you guys never believe that he's always trying to do something weird to me, even though I told you that he's done weird shit to your sister and I don't lie about stuff, but whatever, you know, um, yeah, I don't care. So, you know, I'm kind of glad that you mentioned her because I was trying to hold my tongue, but as soon as you mentioned that you're trying to bring her up here, nah, just stay down there for like two or three years or something. We'll like help each other out and yeah. I haven't found anyone else. I'm just gonna just be like single celibate for a while because because I don't know. Like, I, I don't like our relationship anymore. Like I like us as friends, which is really cliche for me to say that, but it's not my fault that everything is wrong all the time with you. Like you're always fake. Your whole, you know, besides your mom, everything going on with you is always fake. That's not my fault. Like I'm trying to be loyal, but everything's always like some gimmick or some stupid fake shit and then your weird ass sister and her weird ass boyfriend always factoring in that's not my fault so i'm trying to be loyal as fuck but y'all have so much weird ass fucking shit that it's like nah but yeah i'm just being truthful i really only like you as a friend just because you guys are so weird you know i'm really tired of it i mean i think that must be why something like when I, when i was trying not to move to texas i swear on jehovah i swear on my dad's grave i was doing more things to not go down there than i'd ever done in my life concerning trying to avoid something and i don't mean anything illegal or desperate but i mean like i would like write it like a thousand times like or something like and like pray like a thousand times like dear jehovah god please for me not to go down there it's in the hand of the devil like, and I wonder why I felt this feeling. And this is why, because it literally comes to this. Like, y'all so fucking weird. Like, it's just gross. You, your sister, that fucker, y'all so fucking weird. Like, your whole state's just full of fucking weird ass people just doing weird ass fucking shit. Like, nah, you know. It's like, it, and, it, and my, my gut instinct was right. It's been a waste of time. It's like, your state is so worthless, they won't even let me have the person that I'm legally married to. Like, it's always gotta be something fake going on with you. So it literally is like I gain nothing from going down there, except for the knowledge that some places are, are fucking for assholes. Worthless piece of crap places, which I already knew, that's why I didn't wanna go down there. So, uh, I don't know, I mean, this sounds kinda, you know, to say the friends thing, it sounds clichely fucked up, but I only like you as a friend. <laughs> I don't know. And also it's not fair because it sounds fucked up, but anyone on the inside knows that you're fake. So it, it makes me look bad, but the truth of it is this whole Texas bullshit, all of it's fake. So I'm not really being loyal to you anyways. Like you're not gonna come up here. It's gonna be Ryan or some fake ass local fucker, you know, 
Like, it's gonna be something fake. So it makes me look bad saying like, oh, I only wanna be friends, but why? I'm telling the truth. Y'all are fucking weird. Fed fucker's weird, your sister's weird, you're weird. I don't feel like being bothered with no fake ass weird shit anymore, especially not involving shit Texas. Fucking piece of shit place. Nah, I ain't got time for that. Jehovah willing, time will work this out. That's why I said just stay down there for two, because I can't, I don't know, I can't do anything. Like I can't, I can't divorce you, I just can't. I don't know, I'm too loyal. And I still view you as a friend, but at the same time, I'm a hundred percent sure that all this shit's fake. A hundred. And I have no mental illness, okay? I'm a hundred percent sure. And I'm tired of being taken advantage of for the sake of some stupid ass generic Texas show that fucking sucks anyway. It's not even interesting. It's a bunch of fucking bullshit. Your family is stupid and boring except for your mom. I guess that's what it is. It just made me mad that you mentioned bringing your sister up here and I don't want to have anything to do with her because her boyfriend's so weird. I told you that before. Like, remember they were trying to come up here and visit and I said I was going to pretend like I wasn't here? No, no, no. I mean, I don't, I don't know what else is going on. I'm just going to leave it in Jehovah's hands and do my best, you know. Hopefully, I don't know, things will stop being so fake and weird and Texas-oriented. Because your state is full of freaks. I was right. You guys are so fake and all of you are freaks. And like I said, I would feel guilty, but I'm 100% sure that anybody that's a higher up that's on the inside knows that I'm the one getting yanked around. So, I mean, if this was actually real and it was actually you, then I would feel bad. But it's like, no, I'm trying to be loyal. It's not my fault that some fucking retards from Texas want to play like, Let's virtual yank Tia around with a little game show and a little TV show and other little game and then make her community girl. Yay! Nah, how about that? Nah, see, I'm being upfront and truthful. They still gonna lie and try to make it look like I'm crazy. I don't, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. Cause I'm saying what's the truth. Your state sucks and they're deceptive and they suck. I'm tired of this shit. No. And if anyone listens back to this and it sounds crazy, you know what I'm talking about. Your multiple personality disorder that you don't want to take medication for. It makes you so fake because you can never be yourself. So if anyone listens back to this and they're like, what the fuck was she talking about? It's because you know what I'm talking about. You even told me in Vegas. I said, dude, what the fuck is wrong with you? Why do you seem so different all the time? You're always a different person. And you're like, I am fusion, fusion Jared. And I'm like, what the fuck is a fusion Jared? And you're like, oh, well, I'm people in one. Man, you need to get your medication right, okay? I'm tired of this fucking bullshit. And concerning the things I said about your family, it's because I'm annoyed that they're putting up with it. They know that you guys need to be on medication. Your mom is the only one that's reasonable about it. That's why I said I only like her. So yeah, until you, you know, can fix yourself, which I don't think that you're going to. It's been 10 years and you're getting progressively more and more mentally ill, you know, so that now Fusion Jared is always there. So yeah, I'm not going to be dating anyone else. I'm just going to, you know, to myself, just celibate. And and I don't know. I mean, hopefully time will work out whatever needs to happen between us. Because, yeah, you're treating me worse and worse. Like, you can pretend like you're not. But like I said, you are. And you're getting weirder and weirder over time. And I'm trying to be loyal to, the, to you, but not to all that, you know, like... No, we almost were fighting each other in Vegas. That's retarded. Jared's response to Tia's heartfelt messages was dismissive and contradictory, ranging from declarations of eternal love to outright contempt. The insights from Tia's messages shed light on the deeper issues within their marriage, including Jared's problematic behavior and the impact of his actions on Tia. Her decision to seek divorce while still expressing love for Jared points to a conflicted but resolute stance against continuing a relationship marred by abuse and neglect. However, it doesn't end here. Now, an absolutely massive trigger warning here. What I'm about to describe is profoundly disturbing. If you are sensitive to topics involving alcohol abuse, neglect, or death, please click away immediately as this video will not improve from here on out. In November, after the incident where a cop confronted Jared about his license plate, Tia supposedly passed out drunk outside Jared's home. 
The police got involved again when Tia claimed Jared sexually assaulted her, which he recorded and briefly posted publicly before deleting. Allegedly, Jared had supplied Tia with alcohol, contributing to this incident. Okay, so there's a, uh, a community post that Red Screen posted saying that Tia said something about Ryan, and I just watched the video about it that I posted. It's not, the video's not on my channel anymore, but I re-listened to it, and she says, he, him. Yes, it is, putting him. He, him is abusing me, and there's no name in he, him. And she says that about everybody. And why didn't the cops bat an eye to that? Is because they already know she was either one, drunk, and two, I already told one of them that she is schizo. So one thought she was drunk, which she only had, literally had half a beer because only bought her one beer that day. And then the other one knows, knows she was crazy. But yeah, if she's when she gets mad, she starts um, pointing dead at everyone, like saying everyone this and that, which is... Uh, all false because she's you know crazy anyways i just wanted to clear that up in the air for you guys real fast that red screen point says a lot of things that are not true 100 percent not true and subscribe to my channel peace out less than a month after these events tia robinson tragically passed away on december 15th 2023 due to a pulmonary embolism which may have been related to her alcohol consumption. In an alarming act, Jared captured her critical moment on video and posted it to YouTube, only to quickly remove it. Initially, this information came across as an unsubstantiated claim, leaving me in complete and utter disbelief. However, driven by the gravity of the allegation, I sought to validate these claims through extensive research. My investigation was fueled by various online discussions and posts by creators like Red Screen, pointing to Jared's shocking action of filming and posting his wife's passing. Despite a thorough search, including an attempt to recover the video via the Wayback Machine, direct evidence eluded me. My journey led me back to Jared's extensive video archive, searching for any documentation related to that fateful night. Amidst the sea of content, I found videos surrounding the events of that night, excluding the specific footage of Tia's collapse, which painted a deeply unsettling picture of the situation. Compelled to seek answers directly, I engaged Jared during one of his live streams. The interaction was notably subdued, devoid of the aggression previously directed at me by Jared. I inquired directly about the incident, maintaining respect for Tia while probing Jared's actions. All right, what's up, Kusari? Hey, I'm a Kusari, I made you a manager. I made you a man. I made you a moderator higher than the other moderators. Did you call my dad? Someone called my dad, like at five in the morning. I was asking something and then my dad was like, did someone call me? I'm like, it was the trolls, but I was thinking in my mind when I said trolls, I was thinking not that you're a troll or anything, but I was thinking it was Kasari. Did you want to talk here? So everyone can, you know, I you wanted to talk private or what? 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 I did not. Oh, sorry. You did it. My bad. Someone called my dad. I don't know who was asking for me. My bad. Are you going to make a documentary? I don't mind if you do, man. I mean, it's all good, but like, like I was saying, I watched, I tried to watch one of those videos for those people. Like, I don't know two of the videos of the people that were on there. I didn't know who they were. I don't know, just, but how have you been, man? I got some Cocoa Pebbles. Hey, dude, some strange things surrounding your wife's passing. Do that you video of her having a seizure. Rest in peace to her, thanks. Yes, I've seen the video. Um, and true that you had a video. Basically, I want to come clean. <laughs> I want to come clean with that. The revelation was shocking. Remarkably, Jared admitted to filming Tia's critical moment and subsequently posting and removing the video from YouTube. And it's hard to talk about. So I'm just going to say it. I'm going to say it like um, as simple as possible. Um, I did record it. I did record it. I did not think that she was going to pass away. And because I record everything, I record my life. And I, like you see, I have 31,000 videos, right? And I did record it and I didn't think she was going to pass away. To understand the full context and implications of Jared's actions, we first have to revisit the documented events of that tragic night and consider the impact on all involved. The sequence of videos that unfolded Jared's tragic narrative began with him vlogging from the hospital, expressing concern over whether Tia was still alive. 
This set the stage for a series of deeply personal and harrowing updates regarding Tia's critical condition. Tia's health crisis was detailed through conversations involving Jared, his wife's mother, an ICU nurse, and Dr. Antonov at the hospital where Tia was in critical condition. Yes, I'm here at the hospital to see if Tia is still alive. How T is doing? She's dead. Is that one? So they're gonna call the doctor. Okay. okay, hi ma'am. Hi, my name is Dr. Ansonov. I'm one of the ER doctors here. Uh -huh. Hi, so, um, you know, we're still trying to exactly figure out what was going on, but essentially it sounds like she suddenly collapsed. Yeah. Um, what, you know, when she arrived to the emergency room, she was in cardiac arrest, and she was in cardiac arrest um, before she got here as well. Um, what we're suspecting right now is that she has what's called a pulmonary embolism. Just so I explain it, um, I suspect she has a large blood clot in her lungs. Oh, her entire God. left leg is clotted. Oh, um, wow. We're basing this we're basing this on the ultrasound that we're doing. We've been doing CPR on her for about an hour at this point. We do we are intermittently getting pulses back. Because of our very high suspicion, we actually gave her a medication called Tenecteplase which is a very strong IV blood thinner. Very risky medication, but she has no other option right now. After we gave her about 15, 20 minutes later, we were actually able to get her pulses back and the right side of her heart got smaller. She's still extremely unstable and intermittently her blood pressure is going so low that her heart stops and we have to resume everything again. Because of that medication, she is starting to bleed from various places, which is expected. That is expected. What we want to do right now, we're seeing if we can get her stable enough to go to CAT scan to confirm that we see this in the lungs. Because right now, all we're doing this is based on our ultrasounds at the bedside. I don't think she's honestly stable enough to leave her room to go to CAT scan, but we're gonna essentially kind of take her with all of our equipment over there because we need to get the scan done. Please drive carefully because we don't need anything to happen to you on the way, okay, ma'am? Okay, we're gonna continue, um, you know, doing everything, everything possible. But unfortunately, she is extremely, extremely sick at this point, and I, I know you, I know you know that and you understand. But you know, we're we're trying to do what we can, okay? All right, I'm gonna get back to her, and then I'll update you guys with anything, okay? All right, thank you guys. I'll be back, okay? <laughs> Um, but there's still obviously some presence of clots within both sides of each lung, as well as the lower extremity. Um, we have consultation with cardiology on board, but regardless of everything that we're doing, um, I'm already showing signs of extreme anoxic injury or brain, essentially, that's affected the amount of time where her oxygen levels were low. Um, pupils right now are dilated, fixed, non-responsive to any type of light, which are just basic forms of Respond. responses, and, and she's not getting that. Uh, the breathing pattern, she is breathing over the ventilator, indicating that it's not technically brain death, at least at this time. Um, but the respirations themselves are, we call an agonal style, which is another form of not essentially good news. The, the platelets uh, are a type of they're not uh, white blood cells or something else. Right? They're a little they're bit different. Yeah, blood. they're they're a component of uh, blood. Yeah, so there's the whole blood is is made up of a bunch of different little cells. Yeah, and cells. Yeah, so it's a whole plethora of no different pain. types yeah. of blood products. But platelets are essentially, if you can think of, of like a little confetti, 
right? They're not yeah. just moving around little pieces and stuff, but yeah. then you add glue and then they kind of clump together. Yeah. And that's what that's what platelets are. They're very good at being able to clump together to create clots, which is a natural form of our cells healing, right? If you cut mm. yourself, you know, you get this little serous fluid and yeah. then the platelets kind of scab over, right? And that's what's kind of causing the clot. She would drink a lot of even when she oh, does, yeah. It's 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 also it's quite possible that then it, it could be just a factor deficiency like vitamin K or so she's not eating or anything like that. So yeah. it's it, it could it's yeah the combination likely of the alcohol usage as well as the inefficiency in the diet. Again, regardless of the cause, we have the effect and the effect while well, we look for the cause. Even if we find the cause, unfortunately, it's extremely extensive, already done, and assumably very versatile. Yeah. Um, but we're, we're trying. Yeah. Yeah, not a problem. If you guys are ready, follow me. Yeah, well, you. I got a receiver in my head. Shortly after, Jared posted a video from the hospital expressing fear that Tia may not survive. This moment showed Jared's raw reaction as he faced the possible loss of his wife. Uh, I don't think she's gonna make it. Following this, Jared uploaded a video from his home, visibly distressed after spending a night in tears. So, um, Tia's not doing good, guys. Um, I've been up all night crying pretty much. Look my eye. Anyways, um, yeah, I don't, I, I, it's not looking that good. I mean, her body is awake, you know, you know, um, but her mind is, is, you know, it's, her eyes are not dilating to light. Uh, I, 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 I don't think even if she comes to that there's a big chance, you know, she's going to be in a vegetative state. And so, um, I, I don't know. I don't have, it doesn't seem, she was in like 45 minutes in cardiac arrest with no oxygen to her brain. So, um, it doesn't look good. Um, I just, um, you know. Anyways, um, I want to try to go to sleep. I took uh, something to help me go to sleep, so that's why I'm like this right now, but... Uh. The situation takes a sorrowful turn as Jared announces in a subsequent video titled, Tia is no longer with us, that Tia had passed away. Overcome with grief, he recounted receiving a call from the hospital and then finding Tia disconnected from life support, her heartbeat fading. The video cuts off abruptly, leaving the details of her final moments unspoken, but the profound grief and shock in this moment is palpable. Um, so this morning I woke up and then um, at 12, uh, I got a phone call from the hospital and they wanted to know if I knew Tia's information I gave her the date of birth and I, I didn't know her social, but, um, I went over to the hospital and because uh, they they removed her pipe and all the wires so her heart beat started slowing down and when I got there she had a real faint heart beat and then <laughs> In the days following Tia's passing, Jared would continue to provide updates, sharing how he was coping with the immense loss. While it's natural for individuals to process grief in various ways, Jared's actions following the loss of his wife raise significant ethical and emotional concerns. Merely 10 days after her passing, Jared's decision to publicly seek a sugar mommy on social media sharply contrasted with the profound sorrow that one might expect in the wake of such a loss. I need something for a sugar mama that is relatively wealthy, relatively attractive. I will literally do the dishes, cut the grass, feed the massage, 
can have everything. This abrupt shift in attitude is not only incredibly insensitive, but also prompts us to question the genuineness of the emotions that he had just previously displayed. Is it possible that Jared's public expression of interest in a sugar mommy was genuine? Or might it have been a distorted method of coping with his loss? The rapid transition from mourning to seeking financial and emotional support from someone new suggests a concerning lack of regard for the gravity of Tia's death. It reflects extremely poorly on Jared, indicating a readiness to replace her presence in his life astonishingly quickly. Such behavior not only undermines the sincerity of his earlier displays of grief, but it also stresses his troubling approach to dealing with the void left by Tia's absence. Reflecting on the night I addressed Jared during his livestream, the situation became even more unsettling shortly after he admitted to recording and posting Tia's heart attack. Jared elaborated on the circumstances, claiming ignorance of the severity of Tia's condition as it unfolded. Worse yet, he expressed contentment over his actions. Jared revealed he had had another video, still unreleased by the way, showing Tia collapsing near a Papa John's during around the same period that Jared had recently faced incarceration for credit card fraud. He attributed this and similar incidents to her alcohol consumption, which he confessed to enabling, even to the detriment of his bank account. But I'm glad I'm, I did record it, I'm gonna tell you why. Because I, right, I am right now under bond for something I did at Subway. Do you happen to have the video? I have not seen it. No, I deleted all the videos of that. I don't want to, I'm not going to ever look at that again. I deleted every video that I have of, of that relating to that. Like, all of that is deleted. You got Little Caesars as she was... No, I did not. I was not getting Little Caesars as she was having a seat. I was getting Little Caesars in a separate video. That that video I have on private, and I'm not going to release it. But before that happened, she, I was getting a pizza, and she was drunk. Because she was drink. She would drink a lot. I would buy her, and she would buy booze every day. And she would make me buy her booze every day if she, if she wouldn't go out and get it herself. Because I was getting annoyed because I was spending an absurd amount of money on her booze. And, uh... And so when she passed out in front of uh, that pizza, um, she had passed out in front of, not Little Caesars, it was when I went to jail. I went to jail, she had passed out at uh, Papa John's. She had passed out in front of Papa John's. That's when I, and that video's on, that was, that, that, that was all recorded too. And I recorded that for a reason, because I went to jail, because she was passed out in front of Papa John's, and I thought it was a drinking thing. So to summarize, Jared's admissions and documented actions include, filming and sharing the moment of his wife's would-be fatal heart attack online, and then removing the video due to backlash, confirming the video's existence, holding additional footage of Tia experiencing public health issues from alcohol abuse, ignoring Tia as she lay unconscious in public, and contributing to, and funding, Tia's severe alcohol dependency, which as inferred from the earlier hospital discussions, led to a multitude of health complications, ultimately resulting in her death. Jared linked the incident at Papa John's with Tia's later heart attack, suggesting he perceived the latter as another episode of alcohol withdrawal. This misinterpretation led him to believe that Tia's fatal heart attack was a withdrawal symptom. Upon being questioned by a chat user who had seen the video about why Jared had offered Tia more alcohol as she lay seizing, Jared rationalized that he was hoping she would feel less withdrawal symptoms by receiving more alcohol at that moment. When she was having a seizure and all that, I thought that was from the drinking too, like she was drinking too much and you have you have withdrawals from drinking. So that's what I thought was happening again, but at, in front of the subway of Little Caesars. Cause she was working at Little Caesars at the time when she had passed. <laughs> and I was working at McDonald's and I said to my manager, hey, can I go? My wife doesn't feel good. She was an alcoholic, but it looked bad in the video when you asked her, do you want to get you? Cause that's what, you know, she would ask me for. Yeah, that's what she asked me. Why don't you eat little seed anymore? Do you crave it? Do you have withdrawals? I don't know. I, I've been trying to diet lately. So here's the thing with the dieting. So I've been dieting lately. Oh, the thing with the beer. When you're going through withdrawals, I was assuming that she was going through withdrawals from the beer. If you drink, maybe that would cure the withdrawal. So like, do you want, do you want beer? Like, what do you want? Like, so that's what I was thinking that the beer would help. And she said, yes, give me a beer. And then I was walking to get her a beer and I just had this feeling. Partway through his explanation and recounts of what happened that fateful day, Jared was overtaken by what appeared to be genuine remorse and guilt. This moment, marked by Jared's silent weeping, suggests a late realization of the grave consequences of his actions.
live stream captured a profound moment of self-awareness and regret, making it an incredibly distressing and disturbing thing to watch live in real time. The stream ended abruptly as Jared, overwhelmed by emotion, terminated the broadcast following a short outburst of anger. On March 3rd, 2024, Sophia Chason, Jared's niece, who had previously claimed that Jared had sent her links to his OnlyFans account via Instagram on Tyrese Needs livestream, sent me a friend request on Discord. Initially, I assumed it was someone from my Discord server or community tab with a video idea or information about someone like Daniel Larson. However, after noticing she shared no mutual friends or servers with me and checking her profile, I began to connect the dots. The timing of the friend request, coinciding with my announcement about making this video, and the name Sophia made me suspect it was indeed her. I quickly accepted the friend request, and soon after, Sophia messaged me expressing her desire to expose her Uncle Jared. She wrote, Hey, I heard you were doing a documentary on my Uncle Jared, and I'd like to expose some shit on him. Responding, I expressed my intention to gather all evidence and facts to ensure no defamation occurred without proper verification. Three days later, Jared went live with Sophia multiple times, which puzzled me given Sophia's initial message. This prompted me to question Sophia's intentions and her recent interactions with Jared during his live streams, especially when he discussed me. Sophia confirmed it was her with Jared and sent an audio message explaining her stance. That's actually what I was going to tell you, but... My audio never set because my grandma walked in. But basically, um, if you didn't know, my family suffers from like hereditary generational mental health issues. And some of those include like severe schizophrenia, um, autism, and bipolar type 1 and type 2, and a bunch of other shit. So my family struggles with a lot of fucking personal issues. You know what I mean? Um, so every one of them is sick in their own way, if you couldn't tell. But I wanted to say that I maintain neutral in this because I try to maintain decent relationships with the people in my family despite constant negativity. Um, but yeah, a lot of the stuff that Red Screen says is just kind of like assumptions. I mean, I think Jared is not necessarily a good person because he he is he's literally a convicted. He's going to be convicted for a felony soon. So yeah, like I said, I. I don't pick sides, but he is my family and I have to have compassion for him despite his, um, he, he has a lot of shit mentally. <laughs> what I was going to say was you can feel free to ask me like literally anything and I'll answer honestly with proof and evidence to back up whatever I have to say. But like I said, I'm not defending anybody. I'm not justifying anything that anybody has done. Cause I mean, like I said, my family is fucking sick and I don't think their mental health kind of justifies anything that they've done. Cause you know, we all have some fucked up shit about us. Sometimes I feel like I'm the only normal one. It's kind of sad, but um, it's not it's not hard to be influenced by people, especially when it's them. But when it comes to like seeking to get reactions out of people, because that's all they fucking care about. If you couldn't tell, that's why Jared's so indifferent to what you've posted is because all it's about is attention, seeking to get a reaction out of people. That's how my whole family is, and I don't know why. All I have to say in what Jared posts and the titles that he puts. So, yeah, I don't have anything. I, I don't, uh, not even against Red Screen, to be honest. I just think that he should approach um, trolling in a different way because Jared is honestly going a lot on top of he's already suffering. He has autism. He's low, low functioning, if you couldn't tell. Um, so, like I said, I try to have compassion for him, but it's, I don't know, dude. Sophia also apologized for unintentionally involving herself in Jared's livestream, explaining her intention was to encourage him to be more active due to his obesity. Recognizing the importance of this conversation, I asked Sophia for permission to use the audio messages and screenshots for the video, along with photo proof to confirm her identity, to which she agreed. To ensure the person I was communicating with was indeed Sophia and Jared's niece, I requested a picture of her with Jared and a video or photo mentioning my name. She understood the necessity of this verification and sent the requested proof, which matched the picture attached to her Discord profile. After confirming Sophia's identity, I planned to interview her the next day. 
understanding the significance of her testimony for the video's research, and the importance of presenting accurate information while respecting the sensitivity of the subjects involved. The following day, I proceeded with my plan to interview Sophia. She was open to answering my questions, offering her perspective on the matters at hand. My first question to her was about her background with Jared and what she knew about him. Sophia sent me an audio message. Um, so Jared is the brother of my father, Richard Chason, Richard Ryan Chason. Um, I didn't necessarily get to know Jared because I've been fond of him like my whole life because I'm significantly close to my grandparents. As a child, he would not live with my grandparents as my father would. He was always with Tia traveling in like the most random places like and somehow they would always almost always end up homeless in the places that they would travel to um yeah and he came back last year january of last year and i think he's gonna stay here um yeah however the conversation hit a snag when sophia suddenly stopped responding to my messages after she answered the initial question, I inquired further, particularly about her earlier mention of wanting to expose something about Jared. Despite my attempts, she did not respond to any more questions. She had left me undelivered that night and the following day, even though I continued to reach out respectfully and considerately, hoping for a follow-up. I was careful not to pry or pressure her for responses, but when someone indicates they will respond as soon as they can at a convenient time, you wouldn't expect them to just completely disappear after one question. But that's where my conversation with Sophia stood without further development. It wasn't until about three days of total silence that Sophia finally responded, apologizing for the delay and explaining that she had to delete Discord temporarily due to storage issues on her phone. She proceeded to answer my previous question, to which I responded understandingly, half-jokingly expressing my relief that she hadn't ghosted me even though I had been genuinely concerned. Sophia sent a voice message explaining that her family's desire for attention influences much of their behavior. According to her, Allegations against Jared were fabricated for attention, aiming to provoke responses and garner views, similarly to what she told Red Screen. Okay, so something about my family that you should know is that it's really easy to be influenced by people that crave reactions out of other people. So everyone, everyone in my family craves reactions out of them, and that, that's all they kind of want is attention. And like I said, <laughs> The reason Jared seems so indifferent to what you have to say is because he's been receiving hate like his whole life because he's desperate for attention like everyone else in my family. And <laughs> the allegations about Jared, the reason there's no proof to back up anything other than allegations is because it was for fucking attention. And um, yeah, they, they kind of made me say that. It was just for... <laughs> For people like you to make videos about him because he doesn't care whether it's good hate. I mean, whether it's like good views or bad views, as long as it's views, it's money to him. So, but yeah, the relationship between Tia and Jared was, it was a fucking trip. Like the facts of the relationship are actually a lot crazier than what people post about because I've, I was there to experience it and it's probably not going to believe anything I have to say, but when I say that nobody in my family is okay, I mean, Tia was like the worst of all of them. I asked Sophia to clarify if the incident she referred to, where Jared allegedly sent her OnlyFans links when she was 13, was the allegation she had mentioned. In another voice message, Sophia confirmed it was the only allegation she had made, but emphasized the lack of proof beyond her testimony. Yeah, that's the only thing that, um, that's the only allegation that I've ever made and the other things that there's no proof to back up anything other than me talking and if you want I can bring my friend Viviana the one that was on the Tyree Sneed's um stream yard just to tell you like it was literally bullshit <laughs> um but no I've never personally had any like deviant experiences with Jared considering he's more like an older brother to me but like I said I'm not necessarily saying that he's a good person Curious about how she discovered Jared's OnlyFans and her reaction to it, I asked further. Sophia recalled being 13 and stumbling upon suggestive comments about Jared's adult content during a live stream. Although she confronted Jared, he neither confirmed nor denied the allegations. Okay, so I was around 13 at the time. It was in 2020 or 2021, I think. Um, 
my friend Viviana was also 13. And basically I was screen sharing because she was like my best friend at the time. Um, I still talk to her, but it was like during COVID. So yeah, like, like I said, I was on the phone with her and I was screen sharing and I was like, I was showing her how um, my uncle was like a YouTuber, right? And we we're looking at one of his live streams and there was this guy named J J Pornhub or something like J Hub, something retarded like that. And he would always, I noticed the comments like in the live streams, he would always say shit like, oh, like Jared has a PH account. And I'm like, oh, I was like 10. I don't know why he would tell me anything like that. And it was just like, it was really nasty. Um, and then I told Jared, I'm like, do you actually, and he never like denied it. He was just very indifferent about it. Um, and my friend Viviana was like, oh, we should, we should fucking join the stream and like put that shit on blast. And yeah, they had also like agreed with me to, to it. Cause like I said, it, it would bring more attention to Jared. Um, but yeah, there are past live streams with that dude in the comments, I'm sure there is. And he, he, would, he would say shit. And I remember there was also somebody else on Discord who had sent me the link to it. Um, but there were like two separate occasions that somebody had told me. It was just, it was odd, especially to tell a child about that. But no, it was not Jared. I mean, I had asked him about it and like, like I said, of course he didn't accept nor deny it. Honestly, my initial reaction was just like disgusted. Cause I mean, I was, I was a kid and I don't think children are supposed to be kind of exposed to stuff like that, especially at such a young age. But I was exposed to a lot of fucked up shit, like even before that. Um, not necessarily like, like sexually, but just in general, I, I've seen a lot of shit. Um, but I don't know, I, I don't really care now because I mean, People have their fucking nudes all over the place, you know? Like, it's just, it's a common thing. When questioned about the apparent promotion of Jared's adult content, Sophia clarified it was her friend's idea, seen as a way to potentially earn money from Jared's existing ventures. Despite this, Sophia maintains she's never had any unsettling encounters with Jared, attributing any bizarre behavior to her family's overarching desire for attention. Okay, so basically, um, like I said, my family is desperate for attention. It was mostly my friend that kind of suggested um, promoting it because at the time Jared had paid me because we would like go live on YouTube and like beg for donations. Um, and she was like, oh, well, if you probably like promote this because he's already getting paid for it, then he could probably give you money. And I'm like, oh, but I don't know. It wasn't necessarily him. It was kind of like all of us. Um, it was my friend who suggested it, though. And honestly, I don't I don't find anything about Jared weird because I've never really had any odd experiences with him in person because I've I've known him my whole life um but yeah um yeah it honestly was an elaborate troll I mean well relatively um it was also essentially to mess with Tyree because he is not necessarily a good person either I mean I don't have anything against him either but um yeah everyone in Brownsville like they're all there's something messed up about it um <laughs> but yeah, and ev yeah, and everyone here is like obese. I don't know why. But um, another thing is that, yeah, I was gonna mention something about the city that I live in. So this is also where Tyree lives. Um, everyone here has like a very narrow-minded mindset. Um, there's this guy named Tyler Oliveira. He's also a documentarian. And I wanted to say, I I've watched your videos and I think I like them a lot you put a lot of effort into it and i i like that um but he he's a documentarian and he came down to brownsville and it's actually known as like one of the most obese cities in like literally all of the world <laughs> um like the number one um and it's all of the valley actually like it's from mccallan to brownsville um but yeah that that's kind of <laughs> that's why jared belongs here and not only does he fall victim to his own gluttonous habits, but he also has the habit of like not showering for like excessive abnormal amounts of time. And it's like not even funny at this point because everywhere he goes, he leaves, he leaves like a reek of stenches and like it just makes you want to projectile vomit everywhere. Like, and I'm pretty sure that's why Red Screen hasn't bothered like reaching out because he knows that he will be like nose deafened and like physically like killed by the stench of Jarrett's body odor. 
Not too long after answering these questions, Sophia would unfortunately quickly go ghost on me again, so I just left things there and proceeded with the investigation. So now that the Sophia interview was over, you might think, that's the end of the video, right? Wrong. Red Screen, who I've consistently mentioned throughout the video, is a major reason this video was even made. Through his channel and content, I was able to discover all of these terrible things about Jared. Sophia wasn't the only person associated with Jared who reached out to me. Red Screen also messaged me on Discord. We had a conversation about Jared. At the time he reached out, I wasn't as well informed about him as I am now. But Red Screen had helped significantly with this video's research by providing proof for allegations that I had seen but thought were unverified. And he had also provided me with the biggest, most crucial piece of evidence that I had been looking for this whole time in this whole case. Yes, you're right. The video. Yeah, I know. Jared already admitted to recording Tia's fatal health emergency and posting it online. In the live stream. But I know for some of you, an admission of guilt is not enough. There needs to be hard proof and facts. Well, it is with deep sorrow that I can officially confirm, without a doubt, that the alleged video of Jared recording his wife's death happening in real time is true. The video indeed exists. In a way, I got lucky getting in contact with Red Screen, who has been the most active in documenting Jared's actions and has had the most crucial insider information about him aside from family. In fact, the reasoning for this is that Red Screen has had direct ties with members of the Chase on family due to being subject to Jared and Ryan's harassment for years. It makes perfect sense that Red Screen would be one of the few people in the world who actually had a backup or copy of the video. Thanks to his help, we now know that Jared chose to record the event instead of calling 911 like he should have. Of course, I will absolutely not show the video in any way, shape, or form, as it would be unethical to spread a recording of someone suffering a fatal heart attack. Watching that video made me sick to my stomach. It was incredibly traumatic, not to mention disrespectful to Tia herself. It took me nearly three tries just to sit through the whole fucking thing. However, just to confirm the video's existence, I'm describing what the embedded video file looks like when it was sent to me on Discord. I'm censoring the thumbnail because it shows her violently seizing body with her face making extremely intense facial contractions and her eyes rolling to the back of her skull with a spilled bottle of alcohol on the floor. The recording is just over four minutes long, but during that time, Jared did little but pat her on the back and ask her if she needed an ambulance. Tia could be heard making agonal breathing sounds, and around halfway through the video, she kind of just stopped moving and making noises altogether. Jared, however, continued to cluelessly pat her while she laid on the floor, and the recording ended after around 4 minutes and 19 seconds. It's such a fucked situation. I mean, you look at everything that we've gone over surrounding both Jared and his wife and you start to put together the pieces like the animal abuse the the verbal abuse from Jared towards Tia the the alcohol problem and all of the health issues that were talked about in the doctor's conversations and then just the fact that she was in cardiac arrest for 45 minutes by the time they got to the hospital and Jared was recording the whole thing I'm <laughs> Jared killed her. Oh my god. He killed her. I don't like I don't know what other way there is to put it. I mean, how else is there to put he is responsible. He like there is responsibility that Jared has for this situation. Like I'm like fucking wow. She deserves justice. I don't even know what the fuck to say. <laughs> I like I I genuinely don't know what to say other than rest in peace, Tia. I hope that one day you find the peace that was so cruelly denied to you in your final moments. I really am so sorry. In the time since Jared's startling admission regarding the circumstances of Tia's emergency, my interview with Sophia, and my conversation with Red Screen, Jared has continued to publish claims of my impending deportation and to boast about his so-called celebrity connections. Despite these claims, I have not been deported and do not anticipate being deported anytime soon. Additionally, Jared has dedicated several live streams to calling me out, making me the primary subject of discussion in his chat throughout early March. 
Reviewing these streams provides a clear reminder that Jared's quest for YouTube fame is the main thing that drives his actions here. He openly brags and boasts about the views that he anticipates from this video that I've been making about him, completely indifferent to the negative nature of the attention stemming from his predatory behavior and mistreatment of his dogs and family members. To Jared, any attention is good attention, as his sole focus is on gaining subscribers and views. Now Jared, you have garnered the attention you've sought. An audience of tens of thousands, potentially hundreds of thousands, is now aware of your past actions. All of your crimes. All of your abuse. Effectively putting your aspirations for a successful career as an influencer out of reach. You fucked with the wrong person this time. You see, Jared, this video isn't about giving you attention. It's a call to action for my audience. I urge everyone to visit Jared's YouTube channel. Not to subscribe or to engage in harassment, which I do not endorse, but to report the channel for violating YouTube's terms of service, which includes, but is not limited to, harassment and cyberbullying, child endangerment, or spam and scams. I acknowledge that calling for a mass report to remove Jared's channel from the platform can be seen as controversial. But as clearly shown throughout this whole entire fucking video, Jared's harmful, neglectful, and predatory actions justify his removal from the internet for the safety of his family, his community, and people like myself who have experienced his cyberstalking and harassment. Making this video has been so hard. The process of researching Jared and uncovering all of these disturbing incidents and allegations has been so unbelievably unsettling. Imagine being a young university student whose passion project on YouTube about a mentally deranged criminal suddenly becomes a lot more real because another, even worse, mentally deranged criminal's threatening behavior. This situation goes far beyond ordinary online hate and harassment. It involves a very dangerous person who, in my belief, would follow me home if given the chance. I am so unbelievably relieved to live far, far away from Jared. And unlike Jared, my personal information is not easily accessible online. One Google search, Jared Chason, which also just so happens to be Jared's public channel name, you scroll down a little bit and then boom, there's his whole entire full docs. How Jared reacts to this video remains to be seen. He may continue his deportation threats, attempt to claim my video, or perhaps accept the consequences with his typical defiance. But regardless, Jared, the truth about your actions is now known. And there's no escaping the repercussions this time. The outcome of this situation lies not with trolls, haters, or even me, but with karma. A grim fate awaits you, Jared, and it's the consequences of your actions.